Welcome to our first Film My Favorite Club book club meeting. Um, we're very excited to be chatting about Verity tonight by Colleen Hoover. I first heard about this book from a podcast called Bad on Paper. It's one of, if not the only book related podcast that I listen to, and it's not entirely focused on books. They talk about other things too, but they do have a book club component. Um, and they would just always be raving about it. So I checked it out. This is the first Colleen Hoover book I ever read. This is definitely not my typical genre. I do read thrillers from time to time, but this book uh, <laughs> is like push me to the edge of my comfort zone, you know, maybe a little bit past it, but I still found it an enjoyable experience. I was a little bit nervous choosing this as our first selection because I didn't want people to think poorly of me after they read it. I had to, I had to write, you know, the list of, of content warnings and I kept adding to it. And I was <laughs> like, oh my goodness, this, this could be triggering to basically any type of human being. Um, and would be disturbing to, you know, to pretty much anyone. So all of that to say, <laughs> you two are here, you read it. I, I hope that it was uh, enjoyable, but we, we will uh, get into that. And also know that if you're watching this later on, that we have some, where we're not, <laughs> don't let this be the basis for, for what our book club is. We did very much focus on thrillers and suspense this month, but we're moving into gentler territory starting in, in November, which is much more our speed. I think I can speak on behalf of, of all three of us when I say that. So let's start with who you are, where you are in the world right now, and answer the question, what is the book that you would most likely recommend to a friend i'm kathy yeah from <laughs> arizona <laughs> that's book that i would most likely recommend i'll just say the red garden the red garden and who wrote that that's um, an alice hoffman it's not it's not one of her meteor ones but it's it's very interesting and fun and she wrote the practical magic series she she okay and how about you ray um, I'm Ray. I live a little bit south of Houston, Texas, and a book I would recommend, being the like rom-com love story person I am, Nicholas Sparks, oh, like any of his books or movies, I guess of that, A Walk to Remember is like my all-time favorite. I guess one that, you know, and maybe I'm partly biased, my cousin is an author and she mostly writes paranormal romance and those are good, but she has a oh, bunch of like uh, contemporary romance, more books. But one of the first books she wrote is called Call Me Crazy and it's a romance, but it's the main character it has bipolar disorder and my cousin is bipolar. So it's like, she wrote it from the you know experience of bipolar and it's really good. It's called Call Me Crazy by Quinn Loftus. I, I really, I had no experience with her prior to, I had not heard of her. I don't read a lot of, I, I'm assuming she's contemporary romance, is that correct? I think so. Um, interestingly, it seems that Verity was not published under her publisher and she may have actually published it independently or in some sort of other fashion and I'm guessing it was because it was so different from what she took her subject matter. I have read a few of her other books. While the others are certainly not thrillers, I didn't feel like it was tonally that different. Yes, I had never read Colleen Hoover, but uh, I follow Michelle on Goodreads, so she, I knew she had read a few of the others. And so I'd started looking at them, but I never read any of them until this one. So yeah, this was my introduction to Colleen Hoover. I was definitely hooked by the first sentence of like, you're, you start out with the skull cracking on the sidewalk and you're like, okay, I'm like, <laughs> where is this gonna go? 
Kathy, when you read that, did you close the cover? I did. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, this is too much. Help, I can not get this out of my head. But I think I, I remember reading your review of it, Michelle, and I think you said something like, yes, there's all this stuff that happens, but like you're wanting to get, you're reading it so fast that you're not necessarily like thinking about what <laughs> you just read. Um, and it almost gets to the point, like, maybe this sounds bad, but you're like, so many bad things happen. You're like, you almost get like, okay, what crazy thing is she going to do next? I think that her writing was just so addictive that I got caught up in the tornado and I just couldn't. I read it so fast that even though so much of what I was reading was horrifying, that I just kept going and then it was, and then it was over. So, um, yeah, but I, I've never be, I don't, I do read thrillers occasionally, but I don't feel like I have read enough to be able to say, I don't know, this, this book was just so different than, than any other I have read. What was your initial impression of Jeremy in that, like the first scene on the street and in the bathroom. I'm, I'm very jaded when it comes to, um, I, I, I will download a lot of samples of books. And as soon as it's a rich guy, I almost always tune out. Now we did not know that he was in that, in the beginning. He didn't seem, I was suspicious of him. Let's put it that, I was suspicious of him. If I remember, I feel like remembering, not necessarily I was like suspicious of him but I was wondering how he was going to play into the story it was interesting like he seemed to at least come off very nice like he wanted to help her in a very ridiculous like crazy situation that she found herself in and he you know gentlemanly I guess helped her out I felt like it was it was one of those situations in which I would have had a very biased opinion based on if I actually got to see this guy, not just like physically, but his mannerisms, because it's kind of in, in the way that you will read stories about, oh, you know, like the, the shy guy in high school who had the crush on the girl for all those years, and then they finally get together and you're like, oh, this is great. But if you tell that same story and the guy was like, you know, kind of creepy and stalking her, and then you're like, oh no, then that's bad. So with this situation, I felt like I read it the first time I read it, I was like, oh, this is kind of like, I kind of like this guy. Like, I kind of like his brazenness of, of being like chivalrous, but also like locking himself in a bathroom with her. I'm like, you know, like that's kind of <laughs> whatever cool in a weird way. But Reading it this time, I was like, wow, if that actually like happened to me, I would be like, what, like, what do you, like in, in real life, that is not okay. That is, that is not okay for a, yes. for a stranger, for a guy stranger to go into a bathroom. And that's nice if he wanted to give her his shirt, but he should have stepped out of the room. Like that would have been the chivalrous thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> But I did like her ish, right? <laughs> it is, it is. But the, the part that I liked was that, and I'm sure that this is what she was trying to establish here is that they were able to like bond very quickly because of this shared experience. And I'll give Lo and the character uh, the benefit of the doubt in that if she hadn't been through this very traumatic thing and she probably wasn't completely thinking clearly that she might not. And also coming off of the death of her mom that maybe she would have thought that situation through and maybe it was just, you know, the energy between them, but also the energy of the situation that made that somewhat okay. <laughs> Put yourself in Lowen's shoes. Would you have taken this assignment? And more of a broader question for the story, what would you have done any, anything differently? Would you have made different choices than she made? 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would have taken the assignment given the situation that she was in and it would be a great opportunity for her career. And there, there would be no reason why I would think not to at least go and see if you could, if you felt comfortable enough to be able to carry on that storyline. You know, to me, that makes more sense than just um, turning it away without without further investigation. Uh, I did think at some point where I, that she should not have stayed in the house and that if there was something there, there would have been something there out of the house. He would have decided that no, you know, he needs to to put his wife in a home or, and move on with his life or whatever the case. I just, I thought she should have left. I would have left. But of course it, the story needed her to, to be there. If we're in the same situation as Lowen, then yeah, that, I think that's something you could at least try, you know, and, you know, go read the stuff, go this, you know, decide can I, can I write this <laughs> this story? But and so like I understand maybe staying like the one or two nights just to collect all of the stuff you would need because I feel like if it's if it was like where she had a whole office of just stuff and you like had to go through it all. Like I understand having to stay at some point, but cause they kept describing the office as having like the full wall of windows. And that's always so like, they use that in horror in like scary movies. It's like a scary thing. And so it's like, it's like, you know, with that sort of stuff and the creepy thing that, yeah, I'm just like out of there. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm not dealing with this anymore. <laughs> I'm just gonna grab all the boxes and take off. <laughs> As soon as I thought that she was actually faking it, you know, when she when she really starts to get weirded out, more. yeah, no, <laughs> he said I was fair. Right. So, fame. I had so I mean, so many times I thought, what? Are, like, you've got to get out of there. Like, how many times does this need to happen before you? <laughs> I agree. I would have taken the assignment, but I would have figured something else out even if it meant staying at the creepy ex-boyfriend's place temporarily i mean that had to have been better than that situation <laughs> yeah especially yeah. because again this is like such a creepy story you know thing but they're they're in the middle of nowhere right. they're secluded and she's not familiar with the area and yeah, there's, there's no way. I probably would not have even wanted to go there to get the materials. I would have said, if you're willing to make negotiations, like, I don't remember exactly what the figures were, but, you know, double the cost of the offer and uh, take away some of the, her responsibilities in terms of, you know, speaking engagements, then add this one to the list, ship me the materials. <laughs> Just pack up the whole office. What did you think of Lowen as a narrator? Did you trust her? And in terms of her whole thing with the sleepwalking, do you feel like that was just kind of like a red herring or like a plot device? to kind of, you know, the thing with the locks and the doors and to have Jeremy kind of like be her protector. Because I think that in the few thriller stories that I've read, they all have kind of followed that same formula of the woman is either a recovering alcoholic or she's had some kind of, you know, brain trauma or something that makes you like they can say whatever they want and then at the end tell you that it's something else. And I felt like this wasn't exactly that, but I thought that it may have been going in that direction when they were bringing up the sleepwalking and then her popping the Xanaxes throughout the whole story. Yeah, I feel like maybe it was supposed to be sort of this alternate option of like, she's making out like it's all in their head type thing. So it's the... You know, she's seen all this, but the, you know, one explanation is she's not sleeping and or the sleepwalking and all that sort of stuff could like explain away the stuff that's happening rather than. So I guess it sort of gives two paths for the story that you don't know which direction you know it could go into. But I think at first, basically introduced as 
in her head basically but it got very like jumbled when she like when she like started sleeping with the guy and like all that stuff it sort of was like I don't know like all these ridiculous things are happening in this house and you're like okay with falling in love with the guy that's wife is still there and it's like I did I actually did trust her as a narrator I did um obviously I didn't think that her decisions were all great but I I didn't I didn't feel like she was um not thinking clearly that it felt pretty straightforward her narration but I thought it was going to go somewhere with the sleepwalking and that you know, the video, her mom showing her the video, it seemed to me like there was something, some parallel there that her mom had done something to her that she didn't realize. And so I was surprised that it didn't go anywhere. I agree. That whole thing with her hands, yeah. they kept making such a big deal about it, but that it didn't really just go, oh, I have to tell you this story. And then she told him, and I was like, oh, is that it? <laughs> is something else going to happen? <laughs> her mom was never the same with her after that like okay so why and yeah you know, no I was just watching that video and I was standing there for the longest time like okay there's there, there's got to be something I, maybe she has it in her mind to um to have a follow-up story I did have one thought that I was kind of hoping may have been the case because I liked that they made it really clear that all of Verity's books were from, or that her main characters were all villains. And I thought, oh, this would be really, really good if Lowen ends up being like really, like I know that she ultimately like m made another really bad choice at the end of the book, but if she was like a mastermind type villain and if she had written that story and then given it to Jeremy instead of like saying that she was reading it that she was actually writing that because like she fell in love with him or something like that I was like oh that would have been like a really cool you know very twisty uh take on it but you know I get it there are so many different things that you can do you can't do everything right all right what do you think was the scariest moment in the book but at the end there where um, she, she, maybe she looks at the camera and she's moved or something. <laughs> Go, yes. get, get out crawling. Of <laughs> <laughs> like, she made it clear that it's like, I know you're watching me and I know you're watching, you know, we're watching each other now. And, or I know you're watching me sort of thing. Uh, and making it clear that yes, I know you know that I am like faking this whole thing. But I guess it gets into the did she or did she, like was the whole book that Verity wrote was it true or not? But because one of I guess the situation that she did dive into the most detail was the voting part. So like you know all of that like the thought of treating your kids that way. Like I don't have kids, but I just can't even imagine like. Even be able to write that about your own kids, but I think that one was probably the serious, just because like you got the most detail in that situation, or the because I think was there one where the son got like cut with a knife and that like she saw the knife and then it was gone, and so yeah. any of that where it's like stuff disappeared and you're, and which is when I'd be like, no, nope, I'm I'm done, <laughs> but the unknown I guess was probably really was just creepy to me <laughs> it's maybe not as scary but I think it was because it was the first instance of it it's the one that I remembered most was just when she was working and writing and she was Verity was out on the deck and she saw that like she basically was like you know staring at her I mean again leave <laughs> that was so well written because just as you're describing it I, I mean I was thinking that too it was those simple where she just feels like I could I could completely imagine it and you're is she staring at me oh my god she's staring at me and then yes it, it was spine tingling and yeah so there is to to be able to write that and convey it in that way was that was that takes great talent right there and it was what is so, it with like 
scary movies and books that have to have the glass, like the glass house, like that's like the thing in every glass house in the middle of nowhere. (laughs) It's vulnerability. It's, it's people can see in and you can see them looking at you and yeah, I really, I mean, I always imagine books being movies, but those scenes in particular, I was thinking that those would translate so well to film and would just, I, I almost wonder if, I, I think in, in some ways it's, you know, that spine tingling to read it, but I think that they would make it so much more terrifying with the music and yeah, the, yeah. the lighting and the you know, camera movements. When I read it the first time, at least this was my memory of what I remembered, was that I believed the the letter that Lowen found in um, in the floorboard. So I took that as gospel. And when I was done, I thought, oh my goodness. So Jeremy's really like a really like a bad guy and he's a murderer. And I can't believe, you know, that's the case. But this time. Maybe it's because I went in wanting this to be the case. I wanted to interpret it as it was just one more piece of Verity's masterminding and that she wrote that to kind of, you know, try to cover her tracks. The only thing I'm sure of is that I think Colleen Hoover wants it to be open to interpretation. I can't believe that I must have just glossed over that line that she I don't remember what the line was, but to me, the line said, you know, we don't know whether or not this is true or not. Initially, after I read the letter, I was like, oh, crap, like, (laughs) you know, is this true? And then by the end, I I don't know. I, because like, I don't want to think of them as murderers, because the only thing that like, other than, I guess, the knife incident, and we don't really exactly know what happened, like, she doesn't seem like, her son is comfortable sitting in there with her, and I feel like if she was really evil, he wouldn't be comfortable sitting in there with her, so that was the only thing that was, like, I couldn't decide about. I have so many questions about that, (laughs) (laughs) just so many questions. Her first book was written from the villain's perspective as well. So she 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 bases that whole letter on the fact that Jeremy wasn't listening to this conversation that she had with her her publisher. That just it seemed weak to me. It it just like that. And to be able to write that whole thing about why why would you choose that? Why would you choose your 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 children to practice this on that that seemed weird even if you were going to use children you why wouldn't you use somebody else it it just it seemed like that would be really difficult to do for anybody that wasn't disturbed and and then looking for the manuscript he had taken it off of course why would she be looking for a paper manuscript he would just have sent that to himself why wouldn't he have you know why would she assume that he had destroyed an electronic copy? That didn't make sense to me. Yeah, now that you're you're saying it, Kathy, I feel like you're making a really good case because there was like one too many explanations that she needed to give. And the weakest one to me is I had to pretend to be in a coma. That was the only way. I mean, you're in a hospital for a long time. You can't like, tell a doctor or a nurse, like, listen, I'm really, I'm in trouble here. I need to talk to the police or someone, an authority figure. I mean, there's an easy solution. (laughs) And to me, anyone who like would choose to fake being incapacitated for that long is not making good choices. There's, there's something wrong with that. And then and it the almost, whole letter was long. That letter was very long. It just seemed, it, it, it almost seemed, it just it seemed disingenuous. It seemed clinical, almost like I'm just reciting some facts for you. And I was really irritated with the whole looking for the letter. You know, like I, 
you know, I wanted to find the, the hard copy of it. I just, but still, the whole thing was unsettling. And that they're going on with their life and she's pregnant and just felt not like not a happy ending. <laughs> uh, yeah. Just, no, <laughs> yeah, like they tried, but yeah, they're they're Lowen and Jeremy's relationship was like I don't I, I I'm trying to remember if I liked it more. Like I think that there's always a part of me that wants like is craving some sort of love story. So like I'll take what I can get. But it's also just like so icky and not like Kathy unsettling is a perfect word to describe their situation going forward. And we have to move out of this house because we killed your wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, let's sell it. <laughs> let's, let's get out of here. Sort of like they, they ended on this happily ever after, except. <laughs> I, I they, a lot of people hated the ending. That was like a common thread in the reviews. Horrible ending. <laughs> I thought I didn't I didn't think so. I mean it was it was fitting for yes. I yeah. I didn't think it was horrible. I definitely understand that most of the time people, me included, like a nicely tied bow at the end, like clear everything up. Um, but I think it's interesting to not do that sometimes um and to leave it open to interpretation so the i had to go look and see exactly what it was the last line of the book is the only question that remains is colon which truth was she manipulating i mean colleen hoover wants people to have book club conversations <laughs> about yes. this clearly <laughs> She gave you the opening question. Yes. <laughs> so in the in the vein of us being a book and movie club, I'd like to do a segment called The Casting Couch, which is who would you cast to play these characters or who are you imagining? Who played Go Gone Girl? Um, the, 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 uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Yes, you could kind of see her giving that look. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, Rosamund Pike. So yeah. I had the same thought this time reading it because that would, because I, because we had just watched Gone Girl. And I was like, oh, yeah, she would be really good at this. Or someone like her, like, you know, someone that is maybe like blonde and around like her age. I was also thinking maybe like Charlize Theron or, or even, I, I don't think she's ever played a role like this. And this is also probably in my head because we just saw her in uh, Talented Mr. Ripley. But I think that Gwyneth Paltrow could very well play this like famous, accomplished writer if, it, if yeah. the movie had like flashbacks to mm -hmm. her. Okay. Yes. I don't see her playing well in two. She, she, she does play the very innocent into it type of role. So this is kind of another question I had along these same lines is I kind of saw Lowen being younger than than Jeremy and Verity. And I think that she said she even said like she's that she's 32. I, I don't think they ever say how old Verity and Jeremy are. I can't remember, but I was thinking of um maybe someone like Jennifer Lawrence playing Lowen. I thought that Jennifer Lawrence could play that like in parts, you know, feeling very vulnerable, but also a bad guy in the end somewhat. Yeah. Uh -huh. You could see that. <laughs> and being hysterical, you know, at those points. Yeah, yeah I'm, I could totally see that. Yeah, you need like a good mix of like being able to play innocent and hysterical, but also like essentially planning a murder <laughs> like, mm -hmm. yeah i'm trying to remember like jeremy's sort of character we talked about rosamund pike so then would you know what's his name that plays his, the husband uh, ben affleck yeah ben affleck so like because it's very s sort of similar characters i do think that ben affleck would be a good choice i had a really specific random person come to mind 
the first time I read it. And then this time again, I'm like, yeah, it still fits. And I think it has much more to do with his energy than his looks per se. But I was thinking of Edward Norton for some reason. He may be like a little older than Jeremy is supposed to be, but I think he has this very like commanding energy. And I kept getting that from Jeremy that he would just like, you know, walk into rooms and be like, this is what's happening. And Lowen would just be like, sure. (laughs) Sounds great. (laughs) Um, And also I think that Edward Norton has this like a little bit of, I've seen him play good guys. I've seen him play bad guys. So I think that also really fits with being this nuanced type of character. Yeah, I feel like Edward Norton does sort of have this like mystery to him. Mm -hmm. Michelle, it is late for you. It is, it's almost 11, but this this energized me for sure. So thank you guys so much. And we'll be seeing each other again very soon. Yay. (laughs)